special fabulous abaya design today's tutorial is going to be up to anyone first you are going to be learning how to draft cut and sew this fabulous abaya design as a free full length garment then you learn it as a fitted short length garment channel and I am Omotola Gemi Bayi. I'd love you to be part of this wonderful family. Go ahead and click that subscription button. Also hit that notification bell so that I get notified as I upload videos weekly. And for those who already subscribed, thank you so much. I'm already working on all of your requests. I'll be uploading those videos shortly so that we continue our sequential learning shortly. Without further ado, let's now go into the class. Draft the style at hand. Here are the materials required a basic bodice pattern, the measurement parameters, and I have the sketch here of the style, a pattern master or any type of ruler that is convenient, a flexible tape measure, and a tracing wheel, eraser, pen tool, and pen. Then a pair of scissors. Then we need a transparent cell tape, white paper, and brown drafting paper. The first thing we'll do will be to actually transfer our basic bodies pattern to a working paper. And here I have the small scale version, which is for practicing purposes. And I've gone ahead to actually do the transfer, just like what you have on the original drafting paper so i'll quickly put all the materials at site haven't put other materials at site we are left with our basic bodies pattern now now this basic bodies pattern we need to know the required lines fitting lines for this particular design here is a free garment so and as such we wouldn't need the center back tightening and the waist that so we'll go ahead to clean the waist that which will add to the fullness to freeness of the garment that we want to make and also clean the center back tightening so on the front piece as well the waist that will not be required so we quickly clean it off and for the side that which reflect the difference between front length and back length we we'll need to transfer it to the waistline to add more freeness to the front piece. So what we'll do will be to transfer this way. I'll close it up like so. So having done this, front and back piece will actually be equal at the side seam. They will start off by working on the back piece first. So we need to now extend the basic bodies now to the desired gown length and likewise extend the sleeve. So I'll go ahead now and place my back piece on my white paper like so. And securing the paper on the table with masking tape, I'll start off at the edge this way. So I'll go ahead now and extend this body, basic bodies pattern to the Z gown length. Gown length that we're working with is length 60. And since this is a small scale, I'll be making use of the centimeter side to represent my actual measurement. So gown length 60 now, using the centimeter side, I'll start off from the neckline. I'll measure it as 60 centimeter or when you are working with your own pattern you do it in inches 
But for us to have a better understanding, I'll be using the centimeter side. And for me not to be moving my camera up and down. So length 60 measure this way, I'll square across. And here now becomes my hem line. So the next thing we need to do will be to infuse the hip line. So from the waistline now, we'll be coming down by 8 inches as our upper hip line. Then we'll come down by 10 as our lower hip line. And I'll square across like so. Haven't done this on the lower hip line on the upper hip line rather i'll infuse my quarter hip measurement hip measurement i'm working with here is 40 so on the upper hip line divide by 4 will give me 10 so i'll measure it this way then since the free garment i cannot use my actual hip measurement i'll be adding freeness so i'll add 2 inches freeness to this so plus 2 Will give me a total of 12. So what I'll do will be to go over to the hemline and also impute that same value 12 inches. Then I'll connect like so as a straight line. So the next thing we need to now do will be to connect the waist now with this hip line. So I just simply connect. Let me use my ruler also like so so having done this this is my upper hip line i'll label this is my lower hip line and here becomes my hem line so the next thing we need to do will be to extend the shoulder slope now to infuse our kimono sleeve the battering sleeve so i'll go ahead now and extend and from this tip of the shoulder will be infusing the sleeve length sleeve length i'm working with here is 18 inches so from this point i'll just measure outward like so 18 and i'll mark the point now at this point now i'll just square downward by the measurement of the wrist not actually the wrist here the circumference of the arm here and what i have here is nine inches so I'll come down by half of it, which is 4.5. So I'll draw my line, I'll square it downwards like so. Then on that line drawn, 4.5 measured this way. And from this point now, I'll just be linking the lower hip line this way. And with this, we have done with that of the back piece this is the first stage of the back piece before we go ahead to infuse the slash lines and you'll be creating fullness around this region so i quickly go ahead and cut out what we have done so this is what we'll have afterwards for the back piece so i'll put this at the side then we'll go ahead to extend that of the front piece so laying my pattern paper again this way i'll place my front piece at this edge and secure it with the help of my gun like so then the same way we extended the back piece we are going to be extending the front piece but for the front piece we will not be taking our length from the shoulder line because front length is longer than back length so what we'll do will be to extend from this waistline with the same measurements with which we extended the back so here's my back piece once again so i'll quickly measure what i have from this waistline downwards and i'm having a total of 41 here so what i'll do will be from this waistline i'll go down by the same value 41 inches this way then I'll square across. So the next thing we need to do will be to locate our hip line. 
So I'm come down by 8 inches as upper hip line and 10 inches as lower hip line like so. Then I'll square across the pattern paper this way. And on that line, now the upper hip line, I input my quarter hip measurement. Hip is 40, so quarter will give me 10. Then plus freeness of 2 inches. I'll go over to the hem line and measure the same measurement. So I have total of 2. Then I'll connect together like so. Then from this point now, I'll be linking with my waistline. And because we transfer our side that to the waist to add up freeness, I wouldn't be linking it straight on like this. All I'll do is just take it this way. Do not bother with the shaping here. This region is still going to be free. There's no seam here. We are extending. So just leave it like so. So the next thing we need to do will be to extend the shoulder slope outwards like this to infuse our kimono, the battering sleeve. So I'll mark this point and from that point, I'll measure the sleeve length, which is 18 this way. Then squaring down like so. I'll measure the arm, the round sleeve at that region, which is 9. So quarter of it, I mean half of that gives me 4.5. So I'll just link up this point now with my lower hip line like so. And with this, we are done with that of the front piece. And you will check with the back piece for alignment. Both sides from the lower hip line are even. Then we'll go ahead to check what we have here. So they are still even. So even if you have a variation at that point, of course, from this lower hip line down to the hem will be straight. And of course, this region of the side seam is going to be on bias, which tends to make the fabric to pull. So and as such, while joining this side and this side, it will of course align by using easing technique. So that's it. Then we'll quickly go ahead and cut out the front piece as sketched out like so. So this is what we'll have afterwards for both front and back pattern. So the next thing we need to do will be to work on the front piece first. So I'll go ahead to infuse the style line the neck style line so maintaining the neck width that we have now because we don't want the neck to be too wide so come down by the neck depth how low you want it so for this particular one i don't want it too low i'll be coming down just by six inches and for me i'll draw my style line which is this shape And you might need to fill up this end so that it will not have an opening the space in Kusina. So what I'll do will be to place it on to another paper this way. Then I'll be able to draw out my V-shape without having any spacing. So filling up this place now, I'll need to redraw my neckline. So this is the style line for the neck this way. Then we'll cut off. Then from this center front now, I'll be drawing my style line to connect with the lower hip line. So I'll go ahead and draw a straight line this way. So having done this, the next thing we need to do will be to Come to the side seam here to infuse freeness. So I'll be drawing my slash lines. And I'll determine at which point I want it to start and where I actually want it to end. So I'll be starting this way. Then let it end somewhere like so. So it's up to you where you actually want it to start and where you want it to actually end. So it's starting from here and ending here. So you determine the space and connect this way so depending on this opening now 
you now determine how many slash lines you want to impute then you go ahead to divide the opening i mean the length what i have here is 18 inches and i'll let me draw in five slash lines so i'll go ahead now and divide this length 18 evenly so what i could do will be to do let me do three inches spacing three 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 so one two three four five so i'm good to go with that so what i'll just do now will be to draw my slash and i'll be connecting everything to this neck point here so having drawn my slash lines what i'll do will be to first cut off this part because we'll be using a different fabric for this region so this remains like that so i'll go ahead now and slash from this end down here because we want to infuse the fullness here So have a slash, this is what I'll have and make sure that you secure your pattern very well. We just go ahead and make sure everything stays in place and to give this region a bit of grip, what I'll do will be to use my cell tape and hold it in place like so from front to the back so that it will have a bit of weight at that region. Then I can further now slash and be sure that it will not cut through like so. Then I'll go ahead and number so that even if it cuts through at any point, I can identify the arrangement easily. So number one, two, three, four, five, six. Then we'll go ahead now and place it on another paper and infuse the fullness. So I'll be placing it on this brown paper now. Using this line as my green line. I'll secure this point this way. This course while game will help me for my green line secure it. Then I'll determine the spacing. So for each of these lines, I could go ahead now and infuse about four to five inches depending on how full you want it. So I'll be putting four inches there about here so from this end four inches then i'll secure the first line i'll go ahead and measure the other part infusing four inches until i'm done with the whole spacing so having done the spacing of four four inches this way this is what i'll have eventually so what i'll do is just to be fine tune this and this way and simply cut of the pattern so this is what we'll have eventually for the upper part of the front piece and by the time we fuse in the other part, we'll be having something like this. And of course, using it to cut our fabric, this part will drop like so. And we'll have our design. So I'll put this outside and go ahead and do the same for the back piece. So starting a measurement from this point, we went up by 18 inches like so. And dividing that spacing by three three inches from this end 
to draw our slash lines three, 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 three. We have five slash lines. I'll go ahead now. Sorry, I didn't draw the style line. I need to draw my style line. And for the back piece, I want to create an opening here so that we'll fasten the two sides together with loop and button. So I'll just come down by about four inches this way so that we can be able to wear the garment easily since the neckline at the front is not too low so i'll go ahead from this point and draw the style line so having drawn my slash lines i'll go ahead now so having drawn the slash lines to give this region structure i'll place my salt tape this way Letting it to extend a little so that I can fold it backwards like so. Then I'll cut off this region and slash the other parts. And like we did the front, we'll go ahead to infuse fullness. So having gone ahead to impute the fullness spacing of four four inches like so just like we did the front piece this is what we have for the back piece and infusing the other piece this way placing it on fabric and of course since it's fabric this will fall downwards to give us the style at hand then of course we need to put a grain line so with the help of this crosswise line that we've done here that where we took our back width i impute my grain line which will guide me when placing it on fabric like so of course the center back is perfect so likewise for the front piece i impute my grain line following this line as guideline and of course the sensor font will guide us so with this we are done with the drafting of the pattern so we'll go ahead now and place on fabric and to show all this i'll be using the full scale this is a small scale pattern that i use for this illustration for those that might be joining us for the first time on our buyer class for this tutorial i make use of small scale which is a smaller version of your actual basic bodies pattern and this is primarily for practicing purposes so we want to go about your drafting you make use of your full scale pattern following all of these guidelines the step by step drafting and you'll be sure to arrive in at just what we have here i have a video already on how to draft your small scale pattern which you also call your quarter scale primarily for practicing purposes in pattern drafting so you could look up the video is already in the description box below so on the full scale now this is what you'll be having placing this pattern on fabric so this is the main body cut out like so this is that of the back and this is the front so i have to flip it backwards for me to cut from this end so this is what you'll be having for the front piece like so so for the sleeve region, this is what we are having. This is our front and we've gone ahead to cut the fabric and notching all those critical points. The neck point, the sleeve opening and the beginning of the fullness added. And this is that of the back piece. We have gone ahead to notch this way. See the center back opening. So we'll go over to the sewing machine now. So here are the patterns for the front piece. So before we go over to the sewing machine, let's arrange easily. So I'll spread open this, the main body of the front. Now removing the pattern from the sleeve part. And I'll knot this region. I'll arrange to make my sewing a lot easier. So this will be attached to this side of the main body this way to the very end 
like so so i'll just secure it with my pin so i'm going to the sewing machine now all i'll just do will be to join so that this is what we have for this side now for the other side following my notching now i'll be attaching this to this end so having attached the sleeve part to the main body this is what we'll be having so i've gone ahead to overlock for neat finishing so on the right side this is the effect that we'll have so this is what we have we have gone ahead to join at the shoulder line having finished our neck we created the loop as well so the next thing we need to do will be to pipe the sleeve opening and join the side seam so this is what we have on the right side already front and back so here is the finished product of our garments i'm going to head to tuck the bottom here at the back then here is the hemline already folded and the wrong side has been overlocked for neat finishing for this region this center front like to cover up and to even add it as element of designing i have cut out this in form of belt so i'll go ahead now and just stitch it to this part and afterwards we'll be tying it like so and this will help us to cover any seam that is not well finished here then this will be enough to be attached along the seam on the wrong side not on the surface on the wrong side so that you can grip it well on your body but that's optional anyway if you want it but even without the belt you are good to go with it like so now one good thing about pattern drafting is once you draft your pattern you can use that pattern to reproduce sell i mean make multiple garments and in the same design if you are into ready to wear and you could actually modify it into another design so what i want us to do will be these were the patterns that we use this is that on the front front pattern and this was the one for the back piece now what i intend to do will be to be using the same pattern for something smarter we are going to be reducing the length and likewise the hip so if you want to do still something of this nature the design we are maintaining the upper part the sleeve part but for the main body now we want something fitted and shorter so what we'll do is remember the length that we use for this particular gown was 60 so i will place my tape measure here so we measure length 60 this way now i want to do something short let's say about 40 length 40 we just slightly below the knee so here is my length 40 this is 40 i'll just simply square across now this is the new length that i want to be using i want to do a some, something short so have a mark now i'll go ahead and just fold this without necessarily cutting so that this is my pattern i can actually use it for two different garments so just folding it in like this will be okay then again when we measured our hip here we did quarter hip measurement which was 40 and we added freeness of two inches now i want to do something smart we have reduced the length now I'll just be using my exact hip measurement hip is 40 so it's this value that i want to use all the way so what i'll do will be to just square downwards like so So I'll just go ahead now and fold this other end inward like so without having to cut my pattern. So now what I'll just use this now to cut another fabric 
entirely. So I'll be making use of this, my Ankara fabric now for this particular design. And this metallic fabric is what I want to be using for the sleeve region. So I'll still be maintaining this pattern, using this pattern. But of course there will be slight difference. This is the front and this is the front pattern now. Aligning this portion, the two pieces together here. Because of the reduction here, now I'll be ending the pattern, this with the slip pattern will stop somewhere here. So all I'll just do will be to just blend it. And like I said, without having to cut, I'll just fold it backwards. Again, since this is a fitted dress that we are making now, we need to infuse our darts. So for the dart provision, this is our waistline. Let me rule it out to be more obvious. This is our waistline now. And we're going to be using our nipple to nipple distance to impute the dart. So I'll be imputing the dart here, still following even the dart leg that we had earlier that we cleaned off. It's still visible here. So what I'll do is to draw the middle of the dart leg upwards this way. And for the length, after the waistline, we'll be coming down just by 5 inches. This is our waistline. I'll just square it down like so. And the width of the dart, what we had here, the mark is still visible. This is about 3 quarter, 3 quarter on both sides. So I'll just blend it with this point like so. Then this goes upwards, straight on like that. Because the upper segment here is free, so we will not be constructing our dart small here. We just straighten it upwards. So this is my dart leg. And I thought by the time we hold this in, of course this length, let me hold it, let me just hold it in temporarily. Like so. So by the time we are constructing, I mean attaching it with this end, of course, this will get longer. So I need to fold, reduce it further. So this is what we'll be having at the end of the day. Something like so I could just reduce it all the way like so and just find some way to blend it. And like I said, we are not cutting it off. We we'll just fold it backwards. So just like we have done this, we'll be doing the back piece same way, folding the actual length, length 14 now, and folding, reducing the side by the same hip measurement, and we are going to be constructing our dart and folding this slip pattern backwards for the reduction. Then afterwards, we we'll use this to cut out our fabric. in this end. So this is now the final outcome. Everything properly finished. This is the front piece. And here is the back piece. The button already tagged. Our zipper installed here. Then with slits. So we are done with this second design. Welcome back. If this video has been helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. We are yet to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Kindly do so. Like and share this video as well for others to join us on this platform. And they are interested in our paid class where you have access to the step by step sewing of all our buyer designs. Then contact me on my WhatsApp number. Follow us on Facebook group at Cotton Sew with Lapere. Follow us also on Instagram at Lapere Online Tutorial. Until my next video, thank you for watching. Bye for now.